Android 1.0 launched in 2008, and in just the six years since then, there has been 11 new major platform releases. On the Android developer site, we show the relative number of active Android devices running a given platform version in this pie chart, because pie charts are awesome. For our purposes though, you're really better off looking at this as a histogram. If you squint, you can almost see a vaguely bell-shaped curve. With the oldest releases here at the left, their popularity dropping off as devices are upgraded or replaced. The largest proportion of devices are here in the middle, representing devices about two years old. And the newest platforms, gaining popularity as new phones are released or upgrades go out, are here on the right. So with that in mind, the Min SDK acts as your low-pass filter. Google Play won't show your app on devices running a platform version lower than this minimum SDK version. So why not just set the Min SDK to 1 and support everyone? Generally, you'll want to target as many users as you can, but there's a cost associated with supporting some of these older versions. Things like creating different execution paths around deprecated or update APIs, or presenting a different UX to devices with different features. So you need to balance the opportunity of expanding your audience with the cost of supporting those new users. Also, remember that each release introduced with it new APIs and hardware support. So it may not make sense to make your app available to devices that don't support your minimum feature set. By comparison, the target SDK is not a high pass filter. It's used only to declare which platform version you've tested on. An app targeted to a certain API will continue to be forward compatible on future releases. The platform uses the target SDK values in case a future platform makes a significant change to expected behavior. 